Hey, what's up guys? Got the Tenda Nova MX12 Mesh Wi-Fi 6 system that I'm gonna unbox. I'm gonna do speed tests and all the different configurations, range tests, show you guys what the app looks like. This is gonna be a full-on review, just like I normally do. And if you guys haven't already, smash that subscribe button. I'm trying to reach 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so I'm gonna be putting out even more videos than I normally do. So, this thing covers up to 7,000 square feet. Again, I will do a range test, so we'll figure that out. It has a speed rating of AX3000, which is pretty fast for a dual band mesh system. Now, what is a mesh Wi-Fi? Well, a mesh Wi-Fi is two or more devices. In this case, it's a three pack. So three devices that work together to create a single larger network. And this is a good depiction of that. So this is designed to replace your existing router. And the advantage is if you take your Wi-Fi device, you're closer to this room, it'll automatically switch you here. If you get to this one, it'll automatically switch you there. If you're closer to this one, it'll automatically switch you here. So it's really designed to get rid of Wi-Fi dead zones by using a single SSID, a Wi-Fi name. So you don't have to switch between Wi-Fi names every time you walk throughout your home. All right, so let's see what's inside. We get some instructions, how to connect it and stuff, where to get the Tenda Wi-Fi app, which I've used because I've reviewed the MX6 in the past. I'll put links for that as well. I'll also put product links in the description box below if you guys are interested. We get a mesh system. I'm not sure what this button does. It probably connects the other ones to it, but the app should do that automatically. We get a factory reset. We get three gigabit ports. One of them is des designated for the WAN. So this is where you're going to hook up your modem. You have your power port and yeah, that's pretty much what it looks like. All three of these are actually the same. So all three of these are individually routers, but in the same network, only the main one hooked up to your modem is acting as the router. And there should be three power ports and typically an ethernet cable that comes with this stuff. So let's open up one of the power plugs to see what it looks like and if it supports 100 to 240 volts. Okay, so it does support 100 to 240 volts. It's fairly small, compact, nicely shaped. There we go with that. And two of the other ones for the power. Same exact thing, and we get an ethernet cable, and it does not tell us if it's Cat5V or Cat6, but these are gigabit ports, so even Cat5V would be fine. It's been about a month since I've unboxed this thing, using as my main mesh system and so forth so good. So no drops, super easy to connect to, and in that time I had a chance to do all my speed tests and range tests using my Wi-Fi 6 device, like my iPhone 14 Pro Max, not like it, this is the device that I used and a combination of my Pixel 7 Pro and Galaxy S22 Ultra, which are my Wi-Fi 6E devices. Now, if you're wondering why test with Wi-Fi 6E devices if this is a Wi-Fi 6 mesh system, and the answer is simple. From what I've noticed in the past, Wi-Fi 6E devices, even on a Wi-Fi 6 mesh system such as this, typically perform better than Wi-Fi 6 devices. So, I got the full numbers here. We're gonna go over everything. And if you guys haven't already, smash that subscribe button. I am trying to reach 100,000 subscribers by the end of this year. I'd really appreciate it if you guys subscribe, free to subscribe, and I have a whole bunch of mesh systems coming out. In fact, the one I'm testing right now is the Asus Rogue Rapture GT6. So that's coming up in, I'd say in a week or two. All right, let's get started with this. So. Starting with the internet speed test, no matter how fast this mesh system is or any mesh system or any router, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speed. So in my case, that would be 940 megabits per second download and 880 megabits per second upload. Now, in my case, this mesh system is fast enough to get to those speeds when I hook it up via ethernet uh, to my computer, basically, I do get those speeds. However, Wi-Fi devices are typically a different story. So looking at the results, Wi-Fi 6 did pretty well on the download and okay on the upload, and Wi-Fi 6C did better on the download and pretty okay on the upload. Now these are typical speeds that I see with most mesh systems that I test. To truly isolate and find out the performance of this thing, I need to make my computer into the local speed test server. That way I get rid of my internet service provider, my ISP, and the public speed test server which I'm using, which is pretty much being used by companies and our people all, pretty much all the time. So this way I go from Wi-Fi device to router directly to computer, 
And in the case of wireless and wired backhaul, what I do is, if this is the wired one, I basically go near this guy and I do the speed test from here, which then jumps to this guy, which then goes to my server. Let's get straight into it with a single router configuration. We see an amazing increase in speed, both in download and then upload. And you could see that Wi-Fi 6C is actually doing better, pretty much almost being capped to gigabit speeds, which is the maximum possible speeds you can get with this thing because of the gigabit ports. Now, moving on to wireless backhaul, this is when the main one's hooked up to the modem, or in my case, the server, and this guy is one or two rooms away. In my case, it's around 40 feet away when I do my testing, and this guy is wirelessly talking to this one, and it is not line of sight. There are a couple walls. I mean, it is at an angle, so I'd say there's probably two or three walls, depending on how you're looking at it, that it has to penetrate to get to this guy. And looking at these speeds, there is a reduction in speed, as I would expect. So... Wi-Fi 6 device did okay at best, really a, a decent drop, and Wi-Fi 6C did a lot better compared to Wi-Fi 6, but again, still a drop in performance. Now, wired backhaul is basically the same thing, except you have an Ethernet going from this guy to this guy, and that creates a fast and stable network. So when I do the speed test in wired backhaul, I pretty much get the same speeds as I did in the single router configuration, which is what I would expect. So overall, I would say it's very good for wired backhaul setup and okay for wireless backhaul setup. Jumping into range test. Now range will vary based on location. If you're in between floors, if you have a lot of walls, thick walls, if you're in a building with a lot of walls and or routers around, all of this stuff is gonna negatively impact your range. So the more of an open area you live in, the better typical range you're going to get. Now I'm in more of an open area than I used to be, and therefore I got some pretty good numbers. At 20 feet away inside my place, getting really, really good numbers, hardly a drop. At 50 feet, this is when it was actually most impressive because I'm actually outside and I'm still getting very, very good speeds, even all the way up to 100 feet. And it takes me all the way up to 300 feet. Granted, after about 100 feet, it does drop quite a bit, which is typical for these types of mesh systems. So overall, I would say it did fairly well. For setup and configuration, use the Tenda Wi-Fi app, which is available both on iOS and on Android. Very simple to use, gives you all the basic options you need, all the main options, I should say, even has parental controls included, which is always a good thing. And, you know, everything is clean and organized. Really, the only criticism I have with the Tenda Wi-Fi app is it does look a bit dated. So hopefully in the future they will update the user interface to make it look a little nicer in terms of a little more modern but in terms of functionality it's all pretty much there it does give you most of the main options that most people would typically need so overall pretty good there now is it worth getting these why or why not well it depends on your situation so if you have internet speeds of up to gigabit and you're planning on using wired backhaul and you just want a good budget system that just works, this is a great fit for that. But let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below and as always, smash that subscribe button and I'll catch you guys in the next one.